and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. I'm Ron. And I'm Jean Marie. Collectively, we're the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we are welcoming back Sandra Hamilton, and she is joined by Julia. I forgot Julia's last name. Seth. Julia okay. Seth. All right. Seth. Okay. And they are talking to us from London. They are going to be talking to us today about the financial burden of cancer treatments. As you may recall, Sandra is from the Cure Cancer Foundation, which supports the University College London Non-Hodgkin's Lymphoma Cancer Research Division. The University College London is ranked as one of the top 10 universities in the world and has one of the largest facilities dedicated to cancer research. Welcome, girls. Hello, Hi, ladies. Hello. Good morning. Hello, ladies. How are you? Good, thank you. thank you. Very well. And thank you very much for inviting us back again. Of course. We're happy to have you. Absolutely. Uh, Sandra, before we um, dive into our topic today, just wanted to catch up. How are you doing and how have you been during the COVID crisis? Well, it's a long story. I'll try and make it as short as possible. COVID in the last two years with lockdown has caused a lot of stress and family problems and health. I've got a son with a brain tumour caused by the vaccine, which heart gave him a brain bleed, which highlighted the tumour. I've got a husband who's had heart failure. Then he had a heart attack. And now he's just had a triple bypass, plus, plus. And then a couple of months ago, I found I've got a new cancer, which coexists with my old cancer. And I put myself on the back burner as I need to put my husband, my son first. So I now have first cell plasma dysgracia, which is a form of smoldering myeloma, including the non-Hodgkin's follicular lymphatic lymphoma. Wow. I've won wow. the lottery again. There are very few recorded from what I've looked on. Mm. But it's been difficult, so I keep positive. And in the lockdown, like a lot of other people, I've been doing gardening and I learned to do carpentry and re-varnish my inside lots of sections of my house. It's mostly it's wood. Oh, that's nice. Julia so and I, though, we found new ways to fundraise. It's been challenging, I won't lie. A lot of charities have been the same. Julie and I both got together when allowed or remotely to see what we could do to continue raising money for the charity because we could no longer obviously hold events. Yes, so we uh, came up with a few ideas. We encouraged our friends and supporters to set up Facebook fundraising pages to celebrate their birthdays, their special birthdays and anniversaries. We also sold charity face masks and hand sanitizer sets and also took part in a Shush November uh, Facebook event, um, which was basically a sponsored silence. No, people loved that. They thought I was Especially to shut her up. <laughs> <laughs> we should have more of that. I've never heard of that. That's wonderful. But that that's really great that you guys are thinking outside the box and right. continuing your advocacy no matter what. But what is amazing is uh, one of our US supporters just recently did a birthday Facebook fundraiser and raised £1,118. <sighs> Wow, I'm, wow. If you go on my Facebook, you can see his okay. name, but I'm not sure whether he Very wants nice. to be announced on radio. Mm -hmm. Very okay. nice. Sure. That's but, amazing. But people in all countries can help. It's not just for the Brits alone. Sure, sure. of course. Sure. Yeah, because your research is shared worldwide. Precisely. Right. Right. That's one of the agreements I said. If you want us to buy you the equipment, we want mm -hmm. you not to hold back. and We want you to share it with the cancer community all over the world. There is a lot of research, not researchers, but their actual teams, the faculties, I think you call them in the US, mm -hmm. where they're very, yes. very, very mm -hmm. secretive. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They try to keep everything close to their heart. Well, I'm glad that you guys are doing the right thing. And I'm, I mean, we are so sorry that you're going through so much. Yeah. Horrible. Appreciate it. 
What a challenge. <laughs> what a challenge. I mean, Life COVID, COVID, COVID wasn't bad enough. <laughs> You're yes. right. Yes. Uh, yeah, she eats challenges for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> she picks them out by dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, how can cancer and cancer treatments result in financial hardship for patients and their families? Well, I'll try and break this down. To begin with, you've got the loss of your personal income. I've always worked. I've always done my beauty, my reflexology, and even my alternative health medication, facials, etc. And of course, mostly I've not been out of work, so I've lost that income. Um, medical expenses went crazy. You know, PPP's bills almost went up to five, was 50,000 in the end. Had to find ways of not having to pay premiums that were crazy. Then you've got your normal medical expenses. A lot of uh, medications are not covered even by the National Health, unless it's specifics. For example, in England, thyroid mm -hmm. then allows you to claim on a monthly basis you don't have to pay, which does make okay. a huge difference. Okay. Then you've got the complementary and alternative therapy and any costs. I'm very lucky that I've got friends that do give me complimentary, like healing, uh, visualization techniques, etc. And then of course, you've got to be able to get from A to B. And if your spouse, the children are not work, uh, working and they're not around, you can't keep asking people to take you to and from. In England, the NHS are incredible, <laughs> National Health Service. You can get transportation, Sometimes okay. I use the word sometimes because I always you not guarantee childcare can become a problem because you're not well enough to look after your own children, but they still need looking after. A baby still needs its mm -hmm. diapers changed, and also mm -hmm. your fuse is very much shorter. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. your house, well, you have to let something go. And I'm not very good with living in dirt because I'm very uh, <laughs> OCD. <is the> same. <laughs> okay. I can understand. Yeah, that. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and Sandra, how can cancer treatments result in the loss uh, you were saying of um, personal income? How has like, how did it affect you? Well, expanding on what we've just discussed set mm -hmm. before, the ability to work for me was the worst. Okay. But chemo brain, brain fog, however you like to call it, sure. and cancer related cognitive impairment or cognitive mm -hmm. dysfunction? Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, after Sandra um, has had her regular monthly immunotherapy infusion, and uh, this specific one is called Privigen, she finds it extremely difficult to walk, talk, or even function at a basic level for um, 48 hours, actually. Mm -hmm. She has such difficulty in expressing what she wants to say. She literally cannot get the words out. Um, mm -hmm. Her brain is thinking one thing, but the words don't come out, mm -hmm. literally, or they come out, but in the wrong way. Um, <laughs> however, I do have to say, nine times out of ten, I generally do understand what oh, she good. means, and I, you know, I, um, right. I can make right. sense of it. Uh, clearly, the inability to express oneself can lead to depression and um, anxiety. It is mm -hmm. very, very important to be patient and understanding as a friend. It is extremely hard, actually, for family members as they are living it 24-7. Yeah, thank you, Judah. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. And then leading on from that, you've got the fatigue, the permanent exhaustion. People don't understand. They think you look fine, therefore you are fine. Mm -hmm. And as I have had so much, even when I've been abroad and I've used my disabled badge, I had one woman in Spanish really give it to me large. I bought my badge out. I bought out the card from my specialist and in my broken Spanish, basically said, I'll swap my cancer for yours. She burst into tears. People see and presume. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different types of impairment from hearing to sight loss old age, chemo brain, et cetera. And then if you're exhausted, you often go past hardness because you've pushed yourself. And then you just cannot, cannot sleep. So insomnia is a big problem. Oh yes, I've learned not to look at the clock. I've actually got rid of the clock by the side of my bed because all that happens is you wake up, you think, no, I'm going to just lay here. No, I need the toilet. No, I'm just going to lay here. I don't need the toilet. I only went, and then what happens is you look at the clock and think it's been one hour, mm -hmm. one and a half hours, and once mm -hmm. you start, it, it's a slippery slope to no sleep at all. Okay, all right. Well, that's yeah, a that's a that's a lot.
It's and we've talked ad nauseum uh, about how you have like the uh, invisible disabilities. People don't see it. So they yes. assume that you're quote unquote normal. Oh. And, I, and I hate that word. We, we, we've discussed that a lot. They don't understand what's going on. They just see someone and don't understand what's actually happening with them. So they assume the worst. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you so. get both barrels instead of saying, can I help you? You do realize, I don't want people saying, do you realize this is a disabled space? Mm -hmm. I'm happy for them to do that, but don't mm -hmm. attack me, ask me. Right. And then right. Like, exactly. I've got terminal cancer. I'm having a bad day. If I'm having a good day and there's a space opposite, I'll use that space. Right. Or right. one that's near. But if I'm having a bad day, no, I won't. I will use the one that's nearest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's Sandra, you as well. I'm sorry. Uh, didn't mean to cut you oh, off. No, you? that's okay. I was just saying I'm sorry that, 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 that people assume. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. hard. So for our, our listeners, what medical expenses might someone need to pay as part of their overall cancer treatment? Right, so going, sort of we touched on that earlier, we're mm -hmm. very lucky. We do have the National Health Service, the NHS, and they are incredible, really incredible, and we're blessed for that. Mm -hmm. But some countries might not be, I don't quite know what America has. I do know you do have a health service that is free, but I don't know to what extent and how far it covers. So when you're talking about chemotherapies, meeting the doctor, the blood scans, going in order so you meet your doctor for the first time they talk to you they'll send you off for blood they'll send you off to scans then the doctor you need to meet the doctor again then you're going to have another scan to explain the scans and then the next steps of what those are going to be they can all come at a cost because not everything is covered or you might be told you need to be seen quicker and the nhs is swamped so you'll say well i'll pay for this specialist now but use the national health mm -hmm. where they can, where there is time. But time often with the word cancer is very, very important. And you don't necessarily have the luxury sure. okay. of the wait. My mother mm -hmm. okay. went through in okay. lockdown. She was lucky she'd started a treatment, ovarian cancer. She was 80, no, 82, mm -hmm. I lie, sorry, 82. Finished that, got the all clear, then got skin cancer. That was benign. When they went to find another lump, opened her up. And it wasn't benign, it was cancerous, 84 years of age. It's hard, you know, you ask an 84 year old to try and be on her own and do. It's not easy. And my mother is amazing with no. what she can. So going into the, the list, you then go the chemotherapy route, the radiation route maybe, you know, the immunotherapy, which I'll talk to you later. And then you've got the surgical intervention, the stem cell, which is, to be honest, is normally when you've exhausted. I did that 2015. They said it will give me seven years before my cancer's back. 97% of the time, you will get your cancer back. And they were right. It was seven years almost to what? I got told, what, February, March or something, I think, was it, Julia? Mm -hmm. And then May is, so in February 2015, wow. and in 2022 in February, I was told, I had a different cancer, so they were almost spot on. And what worries me wow. is life goes by so quick since when we last spoke to you guys. Mm -hmm. And have I done yes. what I wanted? No. Could I do what I wanted? No. I've just started feeling good to be told I've now got another cancer. I'm, I'm in two minds. Do I, don't I have treatment? Do I just live life? Otherwise, I've wasted all this time, what I put myself through, what I put my family and my friends through. Yes, it bought me time, but the time wasn't productive time. A lot of people out there, I think, will understand that. Absolutely. And then you've got, mm -hmm. and then you've got your medication lists, you know, prescriptions. Uh, I did mention earlier, thyroid will, in England then gives you an ability to not pay. Otherwise, I'm not sure, is it six pounds here or something? Per, it's more, I think. Per, it's per no, medication. Per medication, it's more. For each time, no, it's more than six, seven pounds something, I think. So I was wondering, um, so are you paying six pounds as like a copay? So you you pay six pounds and the NHS covers no, the rest. No, 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 no. When I'm you get into that next. Oh. Yeah. So oh. no, just for a medical so, NHS prescription. So if you get if you go to the NHS G doctor surgery and they give you a prescription okay. for medication, oh. 
say for one thing or three things you pay for each individual thing and it's each and but it's a reduced rate obviously because it's the nhs so it's something like seven pounds something per item so if you get a yeah. prescription for so, but obviously penicillin private, and whatnot. Yeah. but privately obviously right. it's a lot more obviously then the co-payment okay. yeah the insurance premiums the medical dental sometimes that actually can be done on your credit card people do not know read your credit card they have a lot of freebies not for, for health um, I broke a tooth. People say to me, you've got to learn to eat better. So I had a pomegranate <laughs> sal a, a salad and broke my bridge. It was only three years old. I ate well, it cost me a fortune. But the insurance <laughs> did give me quite a chunk back. But also that doesn't need to stop there. It's to do with an electrical problem in your house, plumbing in your house was an emergency. Mm -hmm. Credit cards, look, tell your listeners, look at your credit cards. Read your credit card. What the benefits, you get the the benefits that you get with your... Yeah. Your, your credit cards also um Sandra wanted me to point out to you that the companies uh insurance companies now offer you to um to offer you to pay the first 500 to 1000 pounds of your bills mm -hmm. to drop your annual premium making mm -hmm. it more affordable for you basically like paying your excess on it on an insurance claim right right yeah okay okay right okay well, Sandra, I understand that there are a number of complementary or alternative therapies that can aid someone with cancer, which, yes. yeah, which may help improve somebody's emotional and physical health yes. um, and reduce the side effects of treatments. Are those treatments covered by insurance and have any of those therapies helped in your recovery? Again, we're very lucky in England. There are a lot of places that you can go. For example, I hate saying it, in the Jewish community, there's a company called The High, and it's founded by people to help the local community. Mm -hmm. So there I can have acupuncture, yoga. And there's also Macmillan. And it's Macmillan is a charity yes. for, for everybody. They, they offer um, the, those sort of yes. uh, complimentary uh, therapies as well, for everybody. massage and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so on that side, you, you can have the guided meditation is uh, often uh, hypnosis, but you lay down, uh, you put the tape on and someone talks you through breathing techniques mm -hmm. and visualizations to help. Right. I'm lucky that because I do reflexology and I've got friends that do holistic medication, being healing, uh, reflexology as well, mm. Reiki, et cetera. Right. That does help. It has been amazing to keeping me alive. And also I do believe there are a lot of, you've got to be very careful. Again, I don't want to trip on people's toes. You've got the Rolls Royce type of the vitamins and then you've got the shops. Um, I can't remember the name. You've got uh, the cheaper end of your stores where people can get health products, like mm -hmm. Vina Vein, uh, et cetera. So the Vina Vein is for, to help my veins because being prodded every month, they dry, they shrink. Mm -hmm. And often if I get a nurse that's young, she'll go literally in through the vein and out the other side and mm -hmm. your arm just swells up or your leg yeah. swells up. Yeah. And you don't get anywhere fast other than mm -hmm. an awful lot of pain and discomfort. Mm -hmm. So you're better, and I say this nicely, ask your friends, your family, help you need to buy the better quality because it is about the quality, not just putting it in. With facial creams, you can use, oh no, obviously Boots own brands are fantastic. But this isn't covered by um, no. Um, no. <clears throat> insurance. No, these are not covered no. by insurance. Okay. Okay. Uh, unless you're lucky, again, I don't know how it works in America, but in England, unless you're going through the Macmillan or alternative Those chargeable kind of, yeah places you've got the support groups they are amazing google your cancer your illness your diabetes whatever problem you've got there you're not judged you can say as you feel because people get fed up to back teeth i've got one friend i've known since i was 15 and she goes oh for god's sake you know you're not the only one here and it hurts so when she asks how am i to sound fine because people get fed up with hearing they do so this way you can rant and rave saying you're on a bad day and people say you get the comfort and the suggestions from these support groups on social media and Facebook. They are very good. Yeah.
Earlier, Sandra, you mentioned uh, about some medical expenses. What are some other additional expenses that uh, somebody undergoing cancer treatments may wind up incurring? Right. For example, my husband had open heart surgery. I mm-hmm. couldn't be with him. I wasn't allowed because of COVID, but I had to have my treatment. So I was very lucky Julia here yeah. took me, dropped me off because she wasn't allowed in. And my neighbour, very kindly, Jane, picked me up and brought me home. So you've got that. If I hadn't had that, I'd have had to figure out transportation. Now, again, some hospitals do offer, but otherwise it's an expense. Housekeeping, people looking after your home, helping you keep clean, childcare, at home care, someone to make you lunch. Because you can't make lunch. You stand there. I can look at a cupboard, walk out the room thinking, what? So the, give you an idea. The other day, I thought I was talking to the phone. I was, I was talking to my mug of tea. And all I could hear was the person go, hello, oh hello. God. And I'm like, no, nah, that's not going to work. So this is how dopey I get. No, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah. Terrible. And I guess is you don't really think about all of the little things and you can, I, I mean, I think we can all tell um, from talking to you before and talking to you today that you are a go-getter. You are a woman of action and you get a lot of things done. Right. And so like you need people to replace you in all those areas and that's going to add up. Exactly. Because. And you don't think about it. No. Because, you know, if you're not chronically ill or if you don't have something that's really um laying you out you're right you just go about your day we have a friend down the street that's going that's going to be uh, going through some hard times because of cancer and she was reaching out for support but it's everything it's grocery shopping it's putting away the groceries right yeah i just what about washing general hygiene my husband getting in the shower with him because the only way to get in clean and i've been like that on and off for years it's hard you need people there. right so so home health care right right right, right. Oh, very important. And, and the in europe or in england anyway you got the nih but nhs nhs but uh-huh. but do they cover for home health care as well if you ask the problem is people are okay. too proud they, oh. look at you. they look at you they see the way you dress and they go well mm-hmm. she can afford it or the best oh. one is going to ask your mum and dad. They can afford it. Never wow. assume. Never assume. Especially in COVID right. times. Right. People's jobs have been on the line. People have had their incomes cut. Mm-hmm. Just general food. You don't want to go to a food bank, but you can mm-hmm. actually eat very well if you eat mm-hmm. fresh fruit and vegetables. Mm-hmm. And I now shop on a daily basis and that caught me because I recently set, went to the fridge when my husband came home and realized there was nothing in it because <laughs> he's the one that does the day to day helping to get me the fresh whatever we need sure. so we right. don't waste so at the end of the week we have very little wastage and ha- um, I miss not having the dog around because they're great dustbins <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're always good to have around right <laughs> Sandra, what has been the biggest financial expense that you faced well, it's not the biggest because the, the insurance, I've blessed her for all these years. I've insisted upon that above all else. At one point, I was just working to pay, which is why this has been so hard for me. My income paid for the insurance. And at one point, it was just consuming my income. Mm-hmm. But you've got things like the CPAP machine, which aids breathing. Yeah. It opens up and relaxes the diaphragm and it gives you oxygen, which in turn, believe it or not, gives you energy. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't realize this. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's a, great, right. that's a great tip, actually. Right, you're right. It's not something you would think of, but yeah, that's a great tip. Excellent tip. Mm-hmm. But a lot of hospitals actually will give you and a lot of care centers will give you. It might not be a brand new one, but who cares? Mm-hmm. Just as long as you've got a fresh mask, who cares? Right, right, <laughs> right. Okay. The machine. And pops. Sandra, what support <laughs> have you received during your journey? Well, the support that I've had, in all honesty, is... Um, friends and family, standing up to the plate, fetching, carrying, helping me. My mother, when I was having my stem cell, for three weeks I was out of it because they didn't think I was going to make it because I didn't even know what day it was. But it's amazing how I still used to get into the shower 
the nurse would find me half an hour later just sitting with the water running over my head because I got in and couldn't get out. So I'd just sit down and let the warm water run over me. But it's very important to hygiene. People don't realise the basic hygiene part of things. But there is a funny story. I tried to go back to work because I don't believe in giving up or giving in. And a client of mine that had been with me for 30 odd years, she'd come in for her manicure 10 days. It seemed to work out 10 days after my treatments. And I do her manicure and I, I, I don't know why, it was always 10 o'clock, I'd pass out. So the first time I ended up with red finger marks right across my forehead. The second time I got to the seat and she's sitting there waving fans at me. And the third time we just gave up doing it at 10 o'clock. We, oh, look at the puppy. We uh, waited till basically 10 o'clock passed and just sat there with my head between the le my legs waiting for it to pass. But a lot of people will find there is a pattern of urges. Write it down, see if that patching, pattern keeps up and take notice of it so that you don't find yourself in the shower and passed out where nobody can help you or you're doing a client and you know you're going to pass out. Don't fight it. Let it happen. But be um, my safe. Hands <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I digress as always. Um, my friends have been amazing by dropping off food parcels because the smell of food puts a lot of people off. I couldn't cook because I couldn't bear the smell around me. Oh. And that's been amazing. And again, going back to groups. And that's why I set up the charity 2010 to try and help people. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, Jean was going to ask you, but she has a, a puppy on her lap now. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh who can someone turn to when faced with the financial burden of cancer treatment what support is out there there's a lot of support out there and i'm sure this is worldwide first and foremost the minute you get cancer and you know or any debilitating disease speak to your mortgage broker they are amazing they can either defer or slow your payments down or extend the life of your policies, the mortgages. Okay. Don't be embarrassed. They're there. They want to not have to foreclose. They do not want to have to ask why. So beat them to it. Find out what they can do to help you. In England, we've got a Citizens Advice Bureau. I'm sure you guys have got your, your version, whereby you can go and there are people there to help explain how to fill out forms to get benefits for food, okay. for electricity, for gas, etc. And then you've got the online Facebook. So for example, in America, Nicola Mendelssohn, who heads the social media on Facebook, she's been amazing and she's been very supportive to me. And she has her own lymphoma Facebook. People, as I said, need to go. There is help out there. If they stop being so proud, look. Well, that's, a, that's a, a very good thing to say. And I can understand that um, the, the groups on Facebook are helpful. And, you know, I heard of one. As a matter of fact, we interviewed Kathy Reagan Young. There's a group called Patients Getting Paid. And that group, every day, they're providing chronically ill patients, cancer patients or other patients, with opportunities to make, make money from home, or like you're saying, how to find other resources for um, funds to augment your therapies. Sorry, I said I'd love you guys to tell us because then I can advertise it. I do know that there are care parcel packages, companies that do it for free. There are weak companies that do it for free, tattooists to help make, uh, if you have a mastectomy, et cetera, they'll do it for free if you're a cancer patient. Again, you need to ask. You're one I've not heard of. No, right. Is there a resource guidebook for cancer no. patients so that they can go through and say, okay, I need a prosthetic? Well, over it's probably here. changing every day. I know, but it would be nice to update it. Okay, but it is would, it is wonderful to hear that people are out there. But they um, need a resource doing... guidebook. Why should a cancer patient have to search? Okay, anywho. Ah, oh, um, that's the problem. There is a lot of searching going on. Yeah. Uh, Macmillan do have... And if you speak to your specific cancer section, so mm -hmm. for example, when I had stem cell in the National Health Hospitals here in England, and even the bigger ones, they normally had, was a booth, I call it a booth, you'd call it a booth, like an area like we're sitting in now, 
where people right. are dedicated that know and can help. But if you okay. don't know, ask the hospital you're attending. Can I get okay. help? You need there to you ask. Sure. Don't ask. You'll walk past these rooms and you will not realize the wealth of information out there. Or put even if you're not embarrassed, put it on your Facebook. I have been told I have this. Has anybody else gone through it? Can anybody help me? I need this. The local communities on Facebook with the groups like with that we do for our events, there's dog walking companies. Mm -hmm. um, that's just for example. Mm -hmm. But do you need transportation? They now do have on Facebook one for help. Can you help? And you click that link. Or are mm -hmm. you offering help? And you click that link. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's wonderful. It's interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And and I guess um yeah if and for people out there that are listening that do have a specialty or have a couple of extra hours in the week, go to your local yeah, hospital, hospital and, and, and register. Yes, let people know I'm here. I can cook. I can shop. I can walk your dog. I can clean up after your dog in the yard. You know, anything can help. And here, um, in the U.S. at least, um, as part of the um, our high school program before someone en enters university many schools have a requirement where students have to do so many hours of service mm -hmm. and we I, community service community service and i think that's a great way to fulfill that requirement and beyond help someone who needs a little bit of extra help they're they're starting kids doing community service as young as um like six and seven years old here mm -hmm. And they go to. Seven. Wow. I'm, I'm serious. They go to they go to dog shelters and read their books to, to the, the dogs. dogs. <laughs> and this the way, dogs they're special. they're getting they're getting more learning as far as. Um, they're they're increasing their reading their uh, reading skills, skills right and they're helping the dogs right so they're trying, yeah they're trying to you include know, that in the curriculum where right. you have to volunteering. And helping others is an integral part of the education system, and it I think it can be one of the um, best mood lifters. Yeah, yeah, because you definitely benefit by helping others. Right. And oh, so as per, following off of that, I don't understand why people from different areas that listen to this from all over the world can't actually go to their local churches. Basically, any religion has its own house, you know, sure. the imams, mm -hmm. sure. the rabbis, the priests, mm -hmm. etc., mm -hmm. and ask for help. And mm -hmm. it's very good for kids to learn that life isn't handed on a plate. You've got to work for life. And sometimes life throws you a curveball. But even if it's just a young kid going to an old dim and making her a cup of tea <laughs> or a gentleman, a char, whoever. Sure. Right. You need – people can be very – find themselves very much alone with their own thoughts. And that's very bad. Right, right. I hear you. Very yeah. bad. Right. And it's-, it's The local um, community normally are brilliant, but if you don't ask again, I can't keep repeating myself enough. Don't ask, you will not get. Sure, sure, yeah. Well, Sandra, what tips, hints, and advice do you have for someone just beginning cancer treatments? Well, going back to, I, you can't be proud don't be proud. It, you're the only person who hurts yourself. When you go, it is very important if, to go with someone. It's not just for the fact that they're with you. It's for the fact that they hear. So when I was first told I had six months and three months, my husband didn't hear past. She's going to die in six months. She's going to die in three months. Whereas I heard what my specialist said after, Andreas Virtues, if we can't find a treatment, that works. Okay. I heard that bit. He didn't hear that bit. So mm -hmm. you need to take uh, the, a dictaphone. If you can't take someone, you do need someone because you don't hear past when we cancer and dying. Take, mm -hmm. take notes. Take notes. Take notes. Yes. Write it yeah. down. Notes. Very important. Yeah. yeah. Uh, take a book. Invariably, your poor brain during STEM so I, I my daughter I love Wilbur Smith so my daughter bought me a whole load of Wilbur Smith books I didn't get past the first page I couldn't absorb what I was reading but I did try uh, I ended up listening to hypnosis okay. tapes which goes back to what we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. to help me 
get through. And then you get cold, you want your own creature comforts. So if you've got a blanket you have in your bed, take it. The hospitals are very, very accommodating. I took my own pillows, my own pillowcases. You do have to remember to tell the nurses, otherwise you do lose your pillowcase. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, your feet get cold because you're sitting doing nothing. Take socks, nice okay. socks now, they do amazing with those little sticky things on the bottom. <laughs> yes. If you're fussy with food, my husband has just been in the Wellington, especially one of the top hospitals. Food was in, mm -hmm. inedible, so I was making him sandwiches and taking them up. Mm -hmm. Long-term treatment. Take your personal items that you love, bedding, towels, flam, family pictures, your animals pictures to remind you what you're fighting for. You need to be reminded. It's there, there, and that's the reason you're doing it. Not doing it just for you, you're doing it for the family, for the friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that certainly is great advice, certainly. Well, Sandra and Julia, thank you for coming back on our show today. And uh, Sandra, how can our listeners out there learn more about you? Well, thank you very much for asking. So if people could be directed to our charity's website, which is www.curecancer-ucl.org. And if your listeners would be willing to consider donating $1 each, think of all the equipment that we can buy to help fund the latest machines to help fight cancer. Right. And it yeah. help everybody, as I said, our researchers don't, hold their information it's out there for anybody and you only need to ask and or you might have a loved one that's lost their fight to cancer going through cancer or you want to dedicate a piece of equipment so we've recently had our running team they bought a piece of equipment in its entirety and we're dedicating that equipment to them so if people would like to do that and have a specific amount it doesn't have to be huge it could be a selection of pipettes, it could be a new computer, or it could be a big piece, whatever they're comfortable with. And we can dedicate it to them. So we appreciate any help, however it comes. And thank you so much for having us both back on. We yes, really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. And we are sorry that you've been going through so much. And I, I hope that you do continue to fight because through your fight and through your um, ability to inform others, you're helping millions out there who are in a similar situation. And they're seeing that you, obviously you can do it and you do so much that you know, you're know you definitely an inspiration to us and to our listeners as well. Yes, for sure. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. And if our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us at podcastdx at yahoo.com. Uh, we have a website, podcastdx.com, where we post information about all of our episodes, and that's where you'll find links for this episode. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, and Instagram. And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. As always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. And always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard on this podcast. Till next week. Hello.